This is MSJ Chem. In this video, I'll be looking at limiting and excess reactants. The limiting reactant is the reactant that limits the amount of product that can be made. The excess reactant is the reactant that remains when the limiting reactant is consumed. Let's look at an example. Two molecules of hydrogen and two molecules of oxygen react together. What's the maximum amount of water that can be made? The answer is two molecules of water. Each water molecule is composed of two hydrogen atoms and one oxygen atom. So for every one oxygen atom, we need to have two hydrogen atoms. Because we are starting with a total of four hydrogen atoms, the maximum number of water molecules we can make is two. In this example, it's the hydrogen that's limiting the number of water molecules that can be produced. Therefore, the hydrogen is the limiting reactant and the oxygen is the excess reactant. The excess reactant is the reactant that remains when the limiting reactant is consumed. And as you can see, after the reaction, we are left with one oxygen molecule. So to summarize, the hydrogen is the limiting reactant, which limits the amount of product that can be made. And the oxygen is the excess reactant that remains after the limiting reactant has been consumed in the reaction. In the next example, we'll determine the maximum mass of product that can be produced in a chemical reaction. 100 grams of iron oxide is reacted with 100 grams of carbon. Determine the maximum mass of iron that can be produced. Here we have the balanced equation for the reaction. Iron oxide reacts with carbon to form iron and carbon dioxide. The first step in any limiting reactant problem is to change from grams to moles. We'll use the equation amount in moles equals mass divided by the molar mass. So starting with iron oxide, the mass is 100 grams and the molar mass is 159.70 grams per mole. This gives us 0.6262 moles of iron oxide. Next, we'll do the same for carbon. So the mass is 100 grams and the molar mass of carbon is 12.01 grams per mole. And this gives us 8.326 moles of carbon. In the next step, we divide the amount in moles of each reactant by its coefficient in the balanced equation. So for iron oxide, we have 0.6262 moles and the coefficient in the balanced equation is 2. And this gives us 0.3131. For carbon, we have 8.326 moles and we divide that by its coefficient in the balanced equation, which is 3. And this gives us 2.775. The limiting reactant is the reactant that has the lowest value. In this case, it's the iron oxide. So iron oxide is the limiting reactant and carbon is the excess reactant. In the final step, we'll determine the maximum mass of iron that can be produced. To do this, we look at the ratio between the limiting reactant, which is iron oxide, and the product in question, which is iron. By looking at the balanced equation, we can see the ratio of iron oxide to iron is 2 to 4. So to calculate the amount in moles of iron that can be produced, we multiply the amount in moles of iron oxide by 2, which gives us 1.252 moles of iron. Because the question is asking for the mass of iron, we need to convert from moles to mass. Using the equation, mass equals amount in moles multiplied by molar mass. The amount in moles is 1.252 and the molar mass of iron is 55.85 grams per mole. When multiplied together, this gives us 69.92 grams of iron. Let's end with a summary. The first step is to convert from mass to amount in moles. The second step is to divide the amount in moles of each reactant by its coefficient in the balanced equation. Step three, the lowest value is the limiting reactant and the other reactant is the excess reactant. Step four, look at the ratio of the limiting reactant to the product in question and determine the amount in moles of product that can be produced. And finally, number five, convert from amount in moles to mass.